Hi! Hi. I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're Enchantarium. In today's video, we'll be making Rafelia, the forest unicorn, for a special collaboration swap with Haider from HLE Crafts. From the beginning, I knew I wanted to use a lot of green in this project, and the choice was between Venus and Frankie. After making some concept sketches, we decided to make a hybrid of a unicorn and a dryad and use Venus as a base. I always wanted to customize her because she's my favorite character from Monster High and green is my favorite color. I'm preparing the doll as always, warming the head in hot water, removing the hair from inside and wiping off the factory paint with pure acetone. I'm going to customize her body first. For a long time I wanted to make a doll with animal legs and now I finally have a chance. They won't be more articulated than the original legs, for that I can only recommend to you the Lightfoot's channel and her dragon series. I'm cutting the legs with my Dremel tool, trying not to cut myself. I also made two little holes in each piece to glue the wire later on, but for now let's focus on the hooves. I'm going to use epoxy sculpt for this, because when cured it's really stiff and easy to blend with plastic. Always wear gloves when mixing parts of the clay. First I'm covering the toes and leaving the clay to dry. Then with a big blob of clay, I'm shaping the actual hoof and also leaving it to dry. I think that when the lower part is stiff, it's easier to work with the clay on the rest of the leg. This is how they look after sculpting and this is how they look after drying and some initial sanding. I note that I'm going to add a lot of clay to the legs and I don't want them to be too thick, so I cut some of the volume from the cuffs and around the joints. I know nothing about unicorn's anatomy, but they seem to have strong thighs, so I'm adding clay to the doll's upper legs. Let's assemble the legs using wire, hot glue and epoxy sculpt. At this point we realize that the legs are too long for our forest unicorn and we need to cut them again, so I repeated the process of cutting, gluing and sculpting. I think they look way better now. After sanding with the Dremel tool they look like this. I also sanded off her molded factory pants. I'm sorry, but in Enchantarium's world, unicorns don't wear pants. I'm painting the legs with acrylic paints and then blushing the body with chalk pastels. I chose to make her skin a little bit more yellow and green to have a more consistent color palette. Horses have a very short coat of hair on their bodies and we're going to mimic that with tiny pieces of brushed yarn. I'm gluing it in sections starting from the bottom and the darkest brown. After it dries, I'm brushing off the excess and adding a second layer if needed. Now it looks very fluffy and messy, but I'm going to fix it by adding more glue on top. Then I'm adding more colors to the hair with soft pastels and drilling the hole in her back for a tail. Welcome to the Hazardous Materials Lab! In this episode we'll start by making the horn, as both silicone and resin will take some time to cure. We each made a horn at some point, so I'm gonna cast these two just in case. To make the mold, I'm going to have to make a form to pour the silicon in. I'm taping some thin plexiglass pieces together to make a simple box. Before I put the bottom in, I'm gluing the horns to it using hot glue. This point will be where I pour later. I can now seal the bottom to the rest of the box using a generous amount of hot glue. To make sure I'm safe making this, I'm putting on protective glasses and some gloves, cause casting can get messy. The label of my silicone says the proportions of silicon to catalyst are 100 to 3, so I'm going to measure everything. Putting everything on a scale, I measure out what I think will be enough, which, spoiler alert, it wasn't, and I mix everything till reaching a uniform color. I pour from a pie to discourage any bubbles, but I wish I did enough casting to justify buying a pressure pot to not worry about that stuff. 
The tip of the taller horn didn't get covered, so I was scrambling around to displace some of the silicone. That didn't really go well despite my optimistic thumbs up. As you can see, after the silicone is cured, there is a hole in the mold. At this point I should have added more silicone on top, but it was such a tiny amount I couldn't be bothered. It is now time to make a cast. I'll be doing that with epoxy resin, some alcohol inks and Perlex powders. I measure the resin and hardener out, add my additives and mix thoroughly. I slowly drip the resin into the mold. I modeled a bow and some arrows in Fusion 360 to print on my Ender 3. The prints were really small, so I had to clean them up a bit. Moving on to some clothes. I start with a cape pattern that I bought a while ago and I'm modifying it to be longer. It's always easier to start with a similar garment and modify it, than draft something from scratch. I'm cutting it out of some green panama stretch, which contrary to the name, does not really stretch. I'll be using two different threads in my machine, lime green in the needle and orange in the bobbin to exploit my tension settings to make a two-colored decorative stitch. I'm intentionally ramping up the tension so that the bobbin thread gets pulled out on top of the fabric. I did some testing first to find the sweet spot. First I hem the edge and then add the decorative stitch. I think it looks like a vine with some berries or flower buds on them, thanks to the orange peeking out. The cape gets a simple hook and eye closure and it's ready. I want to use yarn for her hair, but we don't have the right color in our stash, so I'm going to dye it with alcohol inks. I made a few different mixtures, tried them on test strands and chose the best results. Then I made more of the alcohol ink mixture and dunk the yarn in it. It was a mess, but it worked. I left it to dry for one day and after that I can finally start working on the head. Rerouting with yarn is basically the same as with the nylon fiber, but I don't plug all the holes because it would create too much volume. I added some lighter strands and a lot of dark red yarn on the left side of the head. We never had this problem before, but the dyed yarn stained the head a little bit, but luckily it came off by wiping it with acetone. Finally, we can start the face. I'm blushing it with the same pastels as for the body. I think that yellow and orange complements the green skin very well and adds a lot of life to it. I'm also adding color to her brows and lips using pastels. I'm going for an innocent and cute expression this time, so the brows are straight and eyes are big. I'm using watercolor pencils for the sketch and also to make a lot of details like individual hairs on the brows or highlights and freckles. After a few layers of pencils and pastels, I'm moving on to acrylic paints and using a lot of white. I feel like the addition of white makes the doll more real and full of life. I added some details of camera and now I'm painting strong catch lights because you can't have too much of these when you're going for a cute look. Going back to the clothes, I wanted them to look like she's able to make them herself in the forest. I simply took a rectangle of fabric and made two marks where the pieces overlap. I punched out holes at these marks and added some grommets or eyelets. On the other side, I threaded some embroidery thread to be able to tie the top. I threaded the thread through the eyelets on the doll, improvising some ties and knots as well. 
I make a quick paper mock-up of a belt and some panels that I will make out of leather. I'm marking the holes placement again, and this time I will use a snap button. I recently bought a few of these kits and I've been testing them out for dolls. I gotta say that the snaps are still a bit too bulky for me. I put the tunic together using super glue and I know what you're thinking, the bottle looks funny, but I've spilled super glue more times than I would like to admit and that prevents it from tipping over and I can't flip this tabletop anymore because the bad side is already underneath. Using similar techniques, I made a thigh strap to hold a little bottle. I got to test out the last kit, tiny rivets. I also made a simple quiver for her arrows, again using leather and some metal pieces like the eyelets and a buckle. You may notice that I'm using the good side of the leather as the wrong side on all of these pieces and that's because the brown wasn't really the best shade for our palette and Alex is going to paint these in a moment. The resin has cured enough to unmold it, but it's still a bit bendy. It will be completely hard at some point though. I cut off the bigger horn from the spillover as the other horn caught an air bubble and did not cast well. Using a tiny 0.5mm hand drill, I am making a hole in the base of the horn. Using gel super glue, I am attaching a pin to the horn to make a hook that will help the horn sit in the forehead of the doll. I can now drill a hole in her head and using a twisting motion, the horn can be placed. I've accessorized with a flower earring. I made them years ago and, not to start any drama, but I lent them to Alex and she had the audacity to lose one. I also glued on some rhinestones as her earrings. I'm brushing orange and brown yarn and then making it soft and shiny with a hair straightener to make the tail. The leather parts need some detailing and I'm using watercolor paints for it. I'm filling the bottle with moss, a little handmade mushroom, dried flowers and cute iridescent pebbles. The arrows and the bow also need a little bit of detail and this is how they turn out after painting. We made 5 arrows but I lost one during the photo shoot, so we sent only 4 of them. Venus doesn't have hair holes on the right side of the head and I'm going to cover this area with moss. This is how she turned out. Rafelia is now in Pakistan with Haider and we're so glad we collaborated on the unicorn theme. When you check out Haider's video over at HLE Crafts channel, you'll see how differently we interpreted the unicorn topic. Cause you're clicking on this video, right? If you were to create a unicorn character, what kind would it be? Would it be a foresty dryad like Raphaelia? Dark as night like Esmeré? Or something completely different? Let us know in the comments down below. So recently we hit 80,000 subscribers and I have to say thank you to all of you who watch our videos. It would be awesome if we could hit the silver play button threshold, which is 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So 
If you find yourself liking our content, please subscribe to the channel, share the videos, leave a comment, hit the bell, literally any of these would help our channel tremendously. We post doll custom video about every three weeks and we would love to see you here for our next upload too. Thanks! Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. Bye y'all! I'm cutting the legs with my Dremel tool, trying not to cut myself. So? My Dremel tool. After sending with Barb's Dremel tool, <laughs> they look like this. Coin of foul, coin of foul, na 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 na, coin of foul!